Ming, my name is Jobby, and today we're taking a look at the Transformers Universe Deluxe Class Dinobots, also known as my last desperate attempt to take advantage of the Dinobot hype train. Gotta pay that rent, boy! And this figure here comes to us from Captain Anagi, totally not a furry artist extraordinaire. Thank you so much, man. Check him out on Tumblr, Twitter, I don't know what other social media accounts you have, but you are a great artist. A great artist. And of course, Captain Anagi sent this figure to my P.O. Box 329 Nora, California 90651, which might shut down soon. Let's see how everything plays plays out. And the toy line that this older Dinobot figure comes from is Transformers Universe, an older toy line, and you can actually see the date there. I never got it during my childhood for unknown reasons, but I always wanted it, and that's because I was obsessed with the character of Dinobot from Beast Wars, which I did mention in my previous review links in the description. And speaking of my previous Masterpiece Dinobot review, at first I wanted to review this figure before I moved on to this guy, but my whole plan for Dinobot related reviews building up to this figure kind of got sidetracked with the construction of this new studio here so I only really had time for those down getter reviews which you should also check out like the description when all said and done I might even go back to this guy sooner than later are you guys sick of dinosaurs yet Fuck off. The painting of the sculpting on this figure is pretty good, but I already missed the masterpiece Dinobot. Instead of going for show accuracy like superior figures do, this figure stays closer to the original Dinobot toy, which I don't own, and tries to improve the proportions of that. These proportional improvements results in these longer, slimmer legs, and a tail with a nice natural curve. But the figure also ends up being a bit on the skinny side. Someone get this Raptor a sandwich. I don't know, maybe I've just been staring at the masterpiece Dinobot for too long. It kind of sets on realistic body standards for Dinobot. About figures. Damn boy, he fit! Ironically, this figure is actually less kibbletastic than the Masterpiece version, but you do get bits and pieces there. It seems like Transformers Beast Modes will always be cursed with kibble. Or will they? Yeah. The completely visible arms at the chest here kinda make it look like he's begging for something. And while we're here, the mouth is incredibly crooked here, it might be due to the age of the figure. As for his actual arms, they look very emaciated and feel kinda gross. But that's due to that flexible plastic here. What also feels kinda gross are these ball joints at the hips. They seem just a bit too loose for comfort. Fortunately though, he can still stand just fine. That might be due to the large tail balancing things out. And underneath that tail, you might notice he has a bit of a yellow ding dong, but we'll get to that later. In addition to those loose ball joints, you do get a bend at the knee, ball joint at the ankle, every ball joint can be, and that's it. But for deluxe class beast mode, what else was I expecting really? I will say though, the ball joint at the ankle here is a bit above average. What's also above average is not his size. He's a typical deluxe class figure. Here's Figma Madoka Academy, SH Monster Rides Godzilla, Masterpiece Optimus Brian, Voyager Class Rhinox, Deluxe Class Rat Trap, and the Masterpiece Dinobot. And you know what? This figure actually looks pretty good with these other Beast Wars figures. I would have been nostalgia busting right about now, but I'm all emptied out. So something interesting about the box here. It says that the transformation difficulty on this figure is advanced, a level three. I suppose we'll have to see about that. Advanced conversion, this is bad comedy. Transformation on this guy is really simple, but it's a lot of fun. As a result, we get this robot mode, which is actually really cool. For the time it was made, at least. Like the dinosaur mode, this robot mode aims to be a more proportionate version of the original toy. It even has a dinosaur mode head that actually shifts down. What a plan. Unlike the Masterpiece Dinobot, which features a fake dinosaur head in robot mode, and that was such a brilliant feature that I forgot to mention, and oh my god, how much I love that figure! <laughs> and at the dinosaur mode head, you can see that there is a maximal insignia there, but there is a gimmick on this figure which allows you to change his allegiance. Pretty cool that they managed to stick a three-sided die in there, but in my eyes, Dinobot will always be a maximal. And the robot mode head here is surprisingly show accurate. It even features some effect of light piping for that extra bit of life. That's all well and good, but why is he purple? You goddamn Fortnite kids are gonna have a field day with this one. The yellow and purple color scheme doesn't look bad at all, but why though? This is where the Japanese Henkai Henkai version stands out. It features a lot more show accurate colors and why do the Japanese always get the best stuff? At least the figure stands up pretty well despite those previously mentioned loose ball joints. But once you introduce his weapon,
he pretty much becomes completely immobilized. I don't even know how I got some of these shots, but I can guarantee that I lost some hair over it. And worse the all, it doesn't even spin. Zero out of ten. And as you saw from that little weapon conversion segment, which you did not skip, I refuse to believe you're that impatient. You actually have to convert his hands into normal fists. Disgusting. It is legally required for Dinobot to have creepy crab hands at all times burn the heretics. You also get a sword, which he can hold with his normal hand, thank god. And you could also store it inside his tail shield, just like other versions of Dinobot. But you could forget about that because this is actually a missile! That's a little bit too sensitive. And the trigger is that previously mentioned Ding Dong. And a pretty cool feature here is that you can plug this tail right onto his back. Just like the Masterpiece Donabot, which I forgot to mention in that review, by the way, and what a great feature that was, and oh! needless to say, this weapon makes this figure kind of a pain to pose. Arm can rotate, ball joint at the shoulder, which allows the arm to move out, swivel here, bend at the elbow, hinge joint, hinge joint, no sort of waist swivel, ball joint at the hips, which allows for rotation, can move back that far, beautiful spread, no real thigh swivel, and previously mentioned barely knee, ball joint at the ankle, and a new ball joint at the foot. Of course, every ball joint can be. Whose ability on this figure is... <coughs> it's okay. Not only are the ball joints at the hips too loose, but these knees are borderline useless. And with these knees fully stretched out, this guy is not that tall. Here's Madoka Godzilla Prime, Vorja Class Rhinox, Deluxe Class Rattrap, and the Masterpiece Dinobot. This guy looks especially good with these figures in robot mode, but he does look out of place when you put him alongside the Masterpiece figures. There's a big boy zone only, get out of here, kid. And if we ignore the existence of the Masterpiece Dinobot for just one second, because that's how long I could go without it. This figure's pretty good. I would have definitely loved this figure at the height of my Dinobot obsession, but my soul would have still felt empty because, as you know, my dreams laid elsewhere. And I would say that this deluxe class figure is a cheaper alternative to this guy, but... No. So you're telling me I just opened a highly sought after collectible that I could have sold to pay my rent? Who cares about money anyway? So you thought this guy and this guy was kibbletastic? Boy, you ain't seen nothing yet!